Well, hello, welcome to Double Talk. I'm Mark Steffen. Hello there, I'm Michael Mandel. Good to see you. Why did that say penicillin, Michael? Well, that's the drink we're doing today. As you can tell from my voice, you know, usually when you're sick, I just do non-alcoholic things. Oh, really? Yeah, you know, so that you uh, don't get uh, more sick. I, but, I appreciate that. But we've discovered, my wife loves this drink, the penicillin. We discovered this theoretically in, in uh, Scotland. We were there with, with the Levies. Tom yes. Levy was too sick mm. to drink scotch. You know so, that's sick. Yeah, that's really sick. So the bartendress, who was about this tall and about 80 years old, said, I'll make something for you. And it turned out to be what this is, the penicillin, which is scotch, some form of ginger. This is, happens to be the uh, famous Canton ginger liqueur. Right. And uh, honey and lemon, which makes kind of sense. He felt better. And since then, I've been making it for my wife when she gets sick as well as I've seen the recipe, which is exactly that. So it is a real drink, the penicillin. Sometimes there's a variation called amoxicillin, but you know, once you, once mm. you yeah. Apoxicillin. Apoxicillin. No, I think that's what you have. Okay. Let's see. Anybody can make this at home. Now we um, already have the lemon juice squeezed in here, fresh lemon. We did have lemon juice, that's why it looks yes. funny. Um, We've had, we had Canton liqueur on, I think, last year when Kathleen Albers was on. Oh, really? That must have been exactly a year ago. So hope we'll hold this up. She's doing the Arts Fair uh, next weekend uh, at the uh, Convention Center, the first, second, and Two third days, of yes. March. Three days in a row. You don't want to miss that, really. Just yes. A little bit of that, though, right? You know, Canton, if right? you have trouble with a cocktail, you just throw a Canton in it, <laughs> and it's just pure ginger. Marky. Okay. Oh, whew. that was a little. Yeah, M Michael chides me for you know sweet not, drink. not being crazy about this. Like sweet, sweet. everything's sweet. On the other hand, that's I have friends who insist on sweet. Yes, well, that's because they're not sweet enough. So themselves. we're going to hope that this uh, honey dissolves. <laughs> now, if that was piping hot, you know, it, it would have dissolved by now. I was going to get some hot ice cubes, but I just scrape it off because it's not coming off. All right. Oh, you don't want it sweet anyway. Go ahead. I'll take your, you leftover, take it your leftover honey. And we're not drinking this on the rocks or anything else? No, right? because straight up. Because if we're sick, you don't want it uh, cold. That's true. So. And uh, so th this is a, a penicillin scotch drink. Yes. W we'll amend it after we taste it. <laughs> yes. Or mend it. Well, that's not bad. Pretty good. It may have too much... Uh, Mine doesn't have too much, actually. Because of all the lemon juice, it doesn't it's get almost too sugary. Out, not quite. It's not bad. You know why it's, it's not bad? Because scotch is good. That's right. The, it's famous grouse scotch. Yes, famous grouse. Yeah. Now, we have a new sponsor on, on uh, Double Talk, and it's called Manolo's Restaurant Cafe. They opened up over on Loman a few weeks ago, and uh, hey, I, I took some, uh, they had special of the day fajitas, and I took them home. Uh, the last week, and they were great. Oh, good. I was there the week we got these guys and had a bacon burrito breakfast burrito. And now they got all kinds of um, big. all kinds of grand opening specials going on. Uh, coupons galore. Uh, three deuces for breakfast: eggs, bacon, and pancakes for three dollars, two ninety nine. Two ninety nine. Two ninety nine, and uh, you can't beat that for breakfast. That's one dollar for everything. Look at that. I mean, separately. You can hardly make that at home for that much. I think uh, even you can't even get that at Denny's. Oh, and no. They have, you know, handmade stuff. They're pretty cool. The guy Manolo is a real riot. He's he's an authentic chef. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's been around for a long time. Now, you, here are these Facebook specials. You can't beat these. Look at the coupons. $5 off any order of $25 or more. $3 off any order of $15 or more. Or a free drink with any omelet or skillet. You can't beat that. It expires on the 19th. No, no, that's the year 19. It, March, oh, that's right. March 2nd of uh, March 3rd. March I can't 3rd. Read it from here. It's from the 23rd. So you got this whole next week to go there. Until the 3rd of March, 2019. And it's probably a good deal any day of the week. They always have specials, yeah. and uh, it so should be good. If you it's got in an interesting spot. Remember, it was in Las Brisas. Most people don't know where Las Brisas is. Brasas? Brasas. It was Brisas. Brasas. Anyway, see, nobody knew. That's why they're out see? of business. So Manolo should take over and uh, be a big hit. Absolutely. Now, we a couple of weeks ago, we uh, we recorded at that Wex restaurant. 
is coming down from Albuquerque. They're going to take over Dublin's uh, facility. It's, they have now confirmed it, but we record, we reported it two weeks ago. What was interesting is when Dublin's went out, part of that story was that it's possible that a company that I've never heard of in Albuquerque, Wex, was coming down to fill that space. Since then, I've heard people talk about how much they like Wex in uh, Albuquerque. It's a family restaurant. They have a big family. That's why they have a lot of. They so have make, a number of stores in Albuquerque. So it makes you wonder where that where that uh, liquor license is going to go that Dublin's had. We could buy it. Are you really? Have you got four hundred thousand dollars? Yeah. Oh well. Yeah, we can buy it. Was that cheap? Sure. <laughs> there was a million. You know. It depends. Uh, I'm not gonna spend a million on alcohol. Now. Oh, here's another. The here's, old Chinese. We're, we're on wait a minute. Stories. Before we get we're there. Food stories still. Well, the old Chinese restaurant up there in the mall parking lot next to uh, Pecan Grill. Remember that Chinese buffet restaurant that moved over to where Furs used to be? Right. They've torn that building down. And that had been a number of restaurants, mostly Italian restaurants, remember? They had Italian restaurants there. Yeah, it was. And they yes. were pretty good. And uh, Obviously not good enough. And now they've torn it down. And my, my theory is for somebody to be able to afford to tear that restaurant down so they can then build a new one from the ground up, it's got to be a big chain coming in. It's got to be. Big chain restaurant. Remember when the uh, cinema was uh, uh, torn down and then Gardunos came from Albuquerque? They built the place that is now the Pecan Pecan Grill. Grill. Yes, yes. So, it's got to be big. So, keep keep your eyes peeled and probably by the the end Uh, of the year something might be there. We'll we'll let you know. Yeah. Now, this is still Black History Month. And uh, did you hear uh, Trump the other day? He wanted to, you know, pay tribute to... Malcolm 10. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yes. That's uh, a, as good as the guy I knew who was a stockbroker who wanted to sell stock in uh, this company called Toys R US. <laughs> I wonder how that worked out. Yes. Yeah, he now, convinced us. This is also for the Love of Art Month. And uh, just, as, just as soon as for the Love of Art Month is over, the arts fair starts, at, like the Michael fair. just the mentioned. Just, yes. Yes. Now, Columbia Elementary School, which is just down the road from where, from the fabulous Las Cruces Channel Studios, uh, the the elementary school that they built right in the middle of an arroyo that was uh, poorly constructed. Uh, and they rushed to finish they it. They rushed to finish it. And uh, Wooten contractors uh, messed it up royally. Who have done many buildings on the campus. Uh, in fact, the, in campus. fact the, uh, they started taking apart the outer walls and they saw that the the insulation that's supposed to wick the the uh, moisture, moisture away from the building was installed backwards, so the moisture was wicked into the building, and so they because of the mold and mildew issues that they have there. They how, were, how many people work on a building at the same time? One a lot. one person who can make a simple mistake. What about the other people who are doing this? Yeah. Nobody said. How about the wait a second? City the, inspectors are supposed to inspect these things as it, as it progresses along. Um, so anyway, apparently there's a there's a limitation thing. Wooten cannot be uh, held accountable because it's been ten years. Oh, and certain the plans have disappeared too. It's no. all very strange. So they're tearing it down, and we're going to put a new building up in the same place, right next middle to of an it. arroyo, right, right next to the arroyo. right because that'll be out because. We should leave that building there and have that building keep wicking the mold away, just <laughs> yes. pulling the mold away from the new there building. Go. They're going to tear that down, and then they're going to put like a parking lot in a playground area there. So those kids will get sick from the mold in the playground. Oh, man. Hopefully they do. Yeah. No, well, the mold will be gone, let's hope. Oh, you know, speaking about this is uh, Arts Month. Yes. Uh, right now, at this moment, if this is shown at 11 o'clock on Saturday, Saturday. I'm doing a po- I'm sp- I'm the MC at the poetry reading yes. at the uh, Bradley Cultural Center. That's where I am now. That's right. Come see me. You're, you're, you're after the show's over. You'll have the last half hour. You're ubiquitous in your. I'm yes, and this way. makes me more ubic. So I'm a ubic. Yes. Now something else. Did you know Spaceport America? And they're ubiquitous. Just up the road. America. Well, it it's been named business local business of the year by the Hispano Chamber of Commerce. So they must be doing something right. <laughs> well, they are. How do you mess are, up a place that sits empty? Things. Well, you don't have sad customers because nobody could carp about it. Well, there was know? a big commercial shot out there not too long ago. Big car commercial shot there. Uh, that's, it's used for and stuff like they're, that. They're working. Uh, I was just at a meeting at the Arts Council talking about getting all the things that are going on in the city together. Yeah. And something that they want in town for more people to start wanting to come here is 
plenty of art opportunities. And yes. they will be working with all the arts groups in the city to coordinate a, a good way to disseminate all the information, not only for tourists, but for people who are going to come and be engineers here, because obviously engineers love art. Well, or can pay for it. Well, they can pay for it. Yes. The thing is, up, up, you know, up until today, most artists are expected to work for free or nothing in this area. I don't know why artists aren't really valued. Uh, the people that sell the art make more money than the artists themselves. And, and you're an actor, which is an artist. I'm also and, a director and, that, and, and that's a writer. pretty much your pay scale, right? Yeah, pretty much yeah, around free. here, yes. And uh, everybody wants it for free. Well, there you go. So, but the spaceport is coming up, and they will bring people in, and their entourages. Everybody who's going to be famous enough to come to this spaceport is going to have an entourage. Well, if they're that rich to to pay two hundred thousand dollars for a five minute flight in they, space, you think they'll pay two hundred bucks for a hotel room? They'll have an entourage, and there'll be a lot of hotel rooms. And apparently, uh, Clint, Clint Eastwood's The Mule, when they shot here for what ten days, yeah, brought in one point three million dollars. Yeah. Now you know the, the village of Hatch has no hotel. <laughs> Among other things, it doesn't have much. Of I mean, it doesn't even have a bar. They have Sparkies. Yeah, they have Sparkies. They have sparkies. And there's a there's a Santa Fe Grill inside Pickwick. They that's, make good burritos also. That's one of the busiest places. Sparkies and Pickwick are the two busiest places in town. The two only places. You know who goes to Sparkies? Everybody. The guys who work at the Border Patrol. Oh yeah. Yeah, because it's the closest good food. Well. So yeah, anyway. So now, how are we doing on time? Okay, now we'll the, do the film the festival. Las Cruces oh. International Film Festival. Where's their poster? Is Don't we have a running? poster? I'm yeah, right good. And that's is going that on right shape? now. Yeah. Uh, this is it. It's going Put on. Put it closer to the camera so so people can read it. Yeah. Oh, oh you know that matches your shirt. That's very yeah. nice. Now that's going on uh, tonight. Is the uh, awards festival, uh, the awards ceremony downtown at the Rio Grande Theater at seven o'clock. There's films going on all day and uh, other programs, seminars, etc. Is is somebody going to host the awards festival? I don't know. Constance Suter is producing the awards. Is festival. she? Yes. I no. talked to her the other night. Maybe she would uh, host the uh, Oscars, uh, which are on tomorrow. Tom yes. Because nobody's are. hosting. I'm guessing the Oscars are going to have some three-dimensional uh, CGI character who will be the the host. That's well, all you need. Somebody has to give some shtick uh, in the beginning to make everybody feel happy and think. Well, listen. I was. We were at um, opening night ceremonies over at uh, Salude. Mm -hmm. in Messiah with uh, Edward James Olmos and Kathleen Quinlan. I had a chance to speak with both of them on camera. Maybe we can roll those in and We're going to roll those in now or after say. the break. Right now. Stay tuned. They're right here. Well, I'm talking with Edward Olmos who's here for the Las Cruces International Film Festival. Tonight we just screened the the Ballad of Gregorio Cortez starring yourself and um and I noticed that William Sanderson was also in that movie. Yeah, Will Sanderson, Brian James, uh, they were both, I brought them over from Battles, uh, from Blade Runner. For, oh, you did Blade Runner first? Yeah. Uh, yes, you and William Sanderson. I actually worked a week on Blade Runner as an extra when I lived in Los Angeles. And um, Gregorio, Gregorio Cortez was something that you were more involved in besides just as, as an actor. You were involved in the production and the music? And, uh, yeah, I produced it and I wrote the music score with Michael Lewis, yeah. You seem to have more, more, more of an involvement in the movie you shot here with Ross Marks as well, because you seem to have seen the footage of the film already. I've been editing the film, yes, with Ross. Yeah, Ross and myself and uh, Bob Lambert. I've been editing the film here and we're working right now on uh, the visual effects. And uh, I'm producing the movie. You are producing Yes, the film. yeah, I'm a producer of the film, yes. Interesting. Now, um, when you leave here, do you have another project in the works? I have four films that are coming out this year, and I've been doing a television series called Mayans MC. Now, the film you shot here in Las Cruces, you were in it with George Lopez. Mm -hmm. um, Kathleen Quinlan. Kathleen Quinlan. And uh, that's going to come out, you, you said, tonight, maybe around the end of the year? Yeah. Yes, I, th I would say around October. October. And uh, before you did this film here, mm -hmm. what was the film prior to that? The one that I did before that was um, uh, a movie called um, uh, Dog's Way Home, which came out, I guess it came out around uh, oh, three weeks ago. Very, very good film. It went, was very successful. And you have three others coming out, three yes, more coming out? Yes, I have, yeah. Before 
the one you shot here in Las Cruces. Right. Great, excellent. Um, I know you've been in Las Cruces before, because I've seen you here before. Mm -hmm. Some years back, you were here, uh, I think, at the Court Youth Center with Irene Oliver yes, Lewis. Yes, we spoke to the community here, yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, you like Las Cruces? Yeah, it's beautiful. Have you had your share of green chili that we have here? Well, yeah, I, I'm a vegan, so I, I kind of like, I love green chili. Excellent. Well, this is the place to come and get it. I don't want to hold you up anymore because I know okay. you're really busy. <laughs> Thank you for joining us right here on Double Talk. Oh, there we are. Thanks, Edward, for taking the time out to join us. I was drinking to his health. Yes. He's a busy, busy man. And he's, he's a warm. vegan. He's a vegan, so he's, he, a vegan? he's got health. That's why he likes to go to... Uh, Have that, green chili? He likes to go to that restaurant. On, Salud? No, the one that used to be on Solano that moved over there to Amador. What's that one called? Habaneros? Habaneros. Habaneros he, is great. Because you can, you, can, you can get vegan food there. Now, I also spoke with Kathleen Quinlan. Uh, Famed actress. Let's roll that in if we can and see what okay. she has to say. It's new to me. Mark Steffen here with Kathleen Quinlan, and uh, she's in town right now for the Las Cruces International Film Festival. And unfortunately, she's not staying for very long, but tonight we screened the film The Ballad of Gregorio Cortez, starring Edward Olmos. And um, uh, you worked on a film this summer with Edward Olmos here in Las Cruces, yes, right? Yes, I did. I worked on. Uh, Walking with Herb with Edward James Almos and George Lopez. And George Lopez, who's also going to be here at the festival this week. And you might see him around town. I know Eddie's been here for, I don't know, several days, if not a week right. at least. Right, Unfortunately, you're leaving town this week. Right. And we won't see you around much longer, but um, uh, you live on with our television program. Yes, and I was here for six weeks when we were filming, and I just loved it. Well, uh, good. Now, do you have any other, other projects coming up soon that we have to know about? Um... Well, I'm going to be narrating something, uh, a NASA documentary soon. So. Awesome. Now, uh, Edward was saying that uh, Walking With Her might be out uh, around Christmas time, do you think? Really? I don't know. He, I haven't seen it. Well, you know, he's actually one of the producers of it. I know He's that. seen the footage of it. I know. That. And uh, I guess he's not letting anybody, anybody else see it. But uh, um, I know Ross Marks. And we always promote the film festival. Oh, Ross is the best. He was so much fun to work with. I loved working with him. Good. And, of course, Mark uh, Mark was up and about for the film yes. when you were shooting it. I know because I was around there. Right. And uh, I'm glad to see him up and about tonight. Or I really am. Yes. You were in Apollo 13, which was a big, big film, um, a Ron Howard movie. And it, yes. that was a really big hit. You played one of the astronauts' wives. Yes. Which one? Marilyn Lovell. I mean, okay, you draw Charles Lovell's wife. Who played Charles Lovell? James Lovell. Levels. James, James Lovell. Lovell's wife, yes. And uh, that was a big film. How was, how was that? Oh, that was an amazing, an amazing ride from start to finish. Uh, it's still going. And uh, it was the most amazing part to me was to meet the real astronauts because they're pioneers of our universe. Yes. And they're a certain kind of man and woman that... I don't know, they just don't make them very much like that anymore. And you got to meet the real woman whose oh, life you portrayed. Marilyn Lovell, yes, I still talk to Marilyn Lovell. She's, oh, that's great. She's an amazing person. She was, uh, she was certainly uh, grounding for James Lovell during that whole, that whole experience. And I have to bring up the fact that I remember seeing you when I didn't know who you were in American Graffiti. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was my first, well, it was, that was my second job. My first job was a um, uh, stunt double for Trish Van De Veer diving off a high board. <laughs> well, American Graffiti, speaking of Ron Howard again, yes. he was the star of that movie. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for coming back to Las Cruces. Thank you. And uh, that's it for Double Talk. Well, wow! Thank you, Kathleen. Am I Kathleen? Because I'm in. Don't you, know, you wish? A, well, well, no, her hair is whiter. No, she's well. Yeah, she's she doesn't have a sore throat, huh? Uh, it's probably time for us to take a break, don't you think? Yeah. You mean in our lives or in the show? I'll go either way. You, either way. So sure. that means we should have more therapeutic scotch, right? Well, there's nothing wrong with therapy. I've always yes. said. Uh, you got to meet some famous people. Cool. Yeah, I had a party with George did they Lopez. Recognize you from all two nights in a row. Party with George Lopez. I certainly did. Really? Yeah, did, I said La Posta. Did he kiss you afterwards? Well, we, we're not that good of friends. Oh. So let's take a break and we'll come back and talk about.
We are back. This is Double Talk. That was a very short commercial. Thank you, Manolos, for uh, being our new sponsor. Here yes, we are. Thank you. Uh, yes. To enable us to drink during our show. So we're going to try different uh, uh, proportions of okay. uh, stuff because scotch is always good for you no matter what. Absolutely. Do you want a little more? Yeah, a and regular amount. What does that mean? I don't know. I should get rid of this. Um, Might as well. Yeah, what the hell. And uh, here's to you being well. I am well compared to what it was like earlier. God. I'm glad I wasn't there to see it. What about that camera you have in my room? You found it? Why do you think I do all those things? Oh, yes. I, you know, I had, to, I had to wonder about that. That little leather suit you put on is just darling. I know, it's a little chafing, <laughs> though. You know, you, you have to put Yeah, some, I saw. Vaseline is really essential. Well, so when you have a cold, is what I'm saying. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, so, we're not, so the Las Cruces International Film Festival is a big thing. It's a big thing. It's just finished. It's well, it's finishing today. tonight. So we found out something interesting from the newspaper. <laughs> uh, if you saw Judge Lopez speaks at NMSU, but this is the Thursday newspaper. And the title of the picture is New Mexico State University President Ross Marks listens as George Lopez takes questions from the audience. Well, so he's the executive we, president of the film festival. He's the president of the film festival. Not the university. Uh, not the university. So, yeah. we, uh, just saying, uh, we've nev we never criticize Sun News. So this is never, this is an opportunity, one more opportunity to not yes. criticize them. Absolutely. We're just congratulating them and giving Ross Marks such a, uh, That's true. you know. Now, tonight is the award ceremony at the Rio Grande Theater for the film festival. They'll be giving out certain awards. Where's like that going to be? At the Rio Grande Theater downtown. Oh, at the Rio Grande Theater. They'll be giving out uh, best picture, best director, best cinematographer, uh, audience favorite. Of all things. Of people who have seen the films, they, you can vote. I've seen the ballots out. And, uh, and then afterwards, of course, there's a big party. And uh, then Sunday, they're showing all the films that won the awards. So they've only been shown once, but nobody knew you know, if they were going to win or not. So after... So after the uh, award ceremony, Sunday they're showing all the winning films. So that's how you're going to see the best of the best. Sunday up at the Cineport 10. Cineport 10, where you can get pizza and bring it to your seat and eat it, according to all the promotion. Get any, that, any food uh, and drink they have, they have there at... Uh, Whatever that spaceport. Upstairs. Can, yeah, they, upstairs. They advertise it all over the place. Yes. Wow. Last, last night it was closed for a special event. Ooh. Were you at that special event? I was. was well, I wasn't up there. But um, so, yeah, so, and they have day passes for $25 to get you into everything. Or $8 to get you into one thing, if that's what you want to do. Well, if you want to see everything at one, I mean, uh, why not? 25 bucks, there's your day. You get to see everything. It works. Okay. And then you're in the movies all day long. Now. Keep your day busy. As part of the festival. Yes. They're showing a documentary based uh, upon the wall. Which was that? And written and produced by the Pulitzer Prize winning team here from, partially from Las Cruces, part of the USA Today team, including our own Diana Alba Solar, Ooh. who's part of that team that won, the, uh, that won the Pulitzer. And they'll be showing the video aspect of that package that they produced that won the Pulitzer. So they're gonna be showing the, the uh, video, the wall, at uh, 1245 today, Saturday. And then afterwards, it'll be followed by a panel discussion including with all the people who worked on is the project. Is Diane Suler going to be there? She will be there. She will be there. I saw, in fact, I saw her last night at the, at the screening well, I went we, to. We have to disclose that. She's a relative of our producer. Don't yeah. we have to disclose that? We, we, don't, Prejudice. Really, yeah. we don't really have to, but we will. And yes. how. So, so she'll be there. I think it's a good way to get insight into the whole process of, of what many they of our, came up Many with. of our uh, viewers may not know what wall. Is it the... The uh, Chinese Wall or the, the Great Wall of China? Yeah. No, no, it's the wall Which, between Mexico and the United States that already what? that currently exists. What? Who would do that? Oh. That's ridiculous. Every president anyway. since uh, Carter. No. no, in one form or another. Consistent. Well, there's yeah. a lot of vacant land out there, but what else is happening in town now? Well, there's a play at the university. Final weekend for the Silent Sky. And what do you know about that? Well, it has to do with astronomy. And uh, well, and I don't want to give it away, but uh, today is there there's, a trick ending? I don't know, but there's two performances. You don't give it away, right? There's two performances. One today at two o'clock, 
and one tonight at 7.30. Really? And then tomorrow night at Sunday matinee. What do they do at for two the, o'clock? So for the silent guy, what do they do for the hearing impaired? It's silent. That's true. So well, only the sky is silent. The actors are they talk oh, a lot. Oh, oh, yeah. that's right. The sky so, never makes much noise. And, and our, our next, so that's an interesting thing to do. There's not much else going on this except weekend. the fact that is this what I texted you? Yeah. That Peter Tork. Does everybody remember the monkeys? Peter Tork was the funny one. He was the bass player. Yeah. He and was singer. A cute guy. And uh, yeah, so he's 77 years old. Uh, well, he was good. I mean, he, out, with, he outlived Davy Jones. Yeah, who was the cute one, right? Yeah. He was. He had. Ooh. He was a cute little Brit. And Mike and Nesmith lived on. Mike I, Nesmith is the one who wrote a lot of songs for... He was uh, a real musician of the He bunch. was. He was the only guy who started out as a musician. And of course their drummer, Mickey Dolenz. Mickey Dolenz was, was a funny guy too. He sang half the songs and, and uh, the rest were sung by they should actually Davy do, Jones. I think they are touring. They're still touring. They are, and now they have to get somebody to fill in for Peter Tork. Ooh. I think that's pretty good. It's going to be harder and harder to find somebody to fill Didn't in. Didn't Mike Nesmith write a song for uh, Linda Ronstadt? Probably did. Yes. He had his own band, group called the First uh, First American, First National Band. The First National Band. Uh -huh. I put money into that. Did you know his mother invented Whiteout? It's true. No, but that's a great link. Yeah, I mean, really, just... Whiteout. If it weren't for her... My term papers would have been really screwed. Well, now with computers, you don't need whiteout anymore. I know, but she's gone, So, but she did it for the time. You don't need buggy whips, do you? <laughs> no. So, so that's it for Double Talk. We're happy to drink uh, penicillin. penicillin if you have a cold. Uh, just a, a little shot. scotch. You don't have to use Canton liqueur. You could use any uh, ginger. You could even shave ginger. Real ginger. Ginger, ginger, ginger is healthy. Yeah, very healthy. As well as uh, honey and Now, uh, now next lemon. week, there'll be a surprise secret mystery oh, yes. co-host. That's right. Taking Michael's place. Right, because he thinks I'm going away. But yes. He, he's going out to the left coast. Yes, that's correct. So tune in to see who takes his place next week. You never know who could be. Hopefully they have more hair. <laughs> So until then, and hopefully they're at least well. And at least they're awake and uh, can drink. Well, good luck on next week. Thank you. We'll see you the week after. Not nothing we'll need it. We'll see you the week after. All right. Thanks for watching on Double Cheers. Talk. I feel better already. You know, it's pretty good. I feel much better. Mm.